Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting the Mann-Whitney U test, as well as the alternatives for the Mann-Whitney U. So the Mann-Whitney U test is a non-parametric equivalent of a t-test. So if we take a look at the fictitious data I have loaded here in SPSS, we can see we have a treatment group. I'm going to turn this so you can see the strings. We have a treatment group that has a treatment level of the independent variable and a control level of the independent variable. And then you can see for motivation, so this treatment would be targeted at increasing motivation. In motivation we have six levels, zero through five. So this would be a Likert scale in this case. And if we look at the variable view for motivation, we can see the six levels, extremely low, low, somewhat low, and then somewhat high, high, and extremely high. So this data is ordinal. It's not measured at the interval or ratio scale. So a traditional t-test will not work with it. So in this instance, a Mann-Whitney U would be appropriate. And this test works by looking at the ranks of each of the scores in the different groups. There are some assumptions for the Mann-Whitney U test. They're not as strict as what you would need for a t-test. But you do need a dependent variable measured at the ordinal or scale level. So that would be ordinal, interval, or ratio. Typically, of course, we use the Mann-Whitney U when we have a variable measured at the ordinal level. The observations need to be independent of one another, and the independent variable needs to have two categorical groups. So as we take a look at these fictitious data, we can see that we do have motivation measured at the ordinal level, and our treatment group variable does have two groups, treatment and control. In a Mann-Whitney U test, the data in the dependent variable do not have to be normally distributed. So to conduct the Mann-Whitney U, I'm going to go over to analyze non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues, and then two independent samples. And you can see by default Mann-Whitney U is checked off, but I'm going to also add Kolmogorov Smirnov Z, Moses Extreme Reactions, and the Wald Wolfowitz Runs. So I'm going to use all four of the test types available under two, two independent sample tests. For options, I'm going to add descriptors and quartiles. For our test variable list, it's going to be motivation, measured at the ordinal level. You see by the symbol there. And then the grouping variable, of course, is going to be the treatment group. And it does require you to define the groups. And in this case, treatment is coded as 0, and control is coded as 1. So I'm going to put 0 and 1. And for group for group one and two, and press continue. So now this is configured to perform these four tests. And I'll click OK, and here's our results. So you can see we have the descriptive statistics. We had a hundred participants. The mean is provided for motivation and for the treatment group, also standard deviation. Minimum, maximum, and the quartiles, the 25th, the 50th, which is the median, and the 75th. So for treatment group, the reason we have results that look like this is because treatment group is an independent variable to two levels. So it's going to have a minimum of 0, maximum 1, and a mean of 0.5, because the groups are equally sized. More of interest would be the descriptors for motivation. We have a mean of 2. Remember, our Likert scale ran from 0 to 5. 
and a standard deviation of 1.4, and of course we have a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 5. So before we interpret the test statistics from the Man Whitney U test, we want to make sure that we take a look at the ranks so that we can see which mean rank was lower, and in this case the control group had a lower mean rank, so their motivation level was lower. And we also have a sum of ranks, and that's lower as well. And of course, the treatment mean rank was higher. So 59 for the treatment mean rank and 41.98 for the control. So we'll say 59 and 42. So there does appear to be quite a difference there. And if you look here at the test statistic, we're looking at the significance here at the end. 0 0.003 is less than 0 0.05, so we'd re reject the null hypothesis that the two groups are equal, and we would say that they are statistically significantly different. So there are three other alternatives that I checked off in the dialog, and the, f the first one to come up after the man with the U here is the Moses Extreme Reactions test. And you can see it provides frequencies here and it has observed control group span and a significant solve for that and trimmed control group span and a significant solve for that. Looking at the observed control group span uh, we do have a statistically significant result. This test analyzes the variability of scores in two groups and is not particularly common in counseling research. The next that's displayed is the two-sample Komogorov smirnov test, otherwise known as the KS test. And this test is a little more common. It's not as common as the man whitney U in the situation with the data the way I had it arranged. But this test is a variant of the man whitney U, and it's typically used for the smaller sample sizes. There's no set number for what represents a small sample size in terms of using a KS test over a Mann-Whitney U. So generally, I would say that if your sample size is 25 to 40, you may want to consider using the KS test as an alternative. If it's less than 25, I would say the KS test would be better for that. So a sample size from 25 to 40, you may want to consider it. Less than 25, you may want to take even a closer look at the KS test as compared to the man with the U. And then the last test displayed in SPSS is the walled Wolfowitz test. And this test examines runs of scores as opposed to analyzing the ranks. Like the Moses Extreme Reactions test, the walled Wolfowitz test is not particularly popular. When interpreting this test for the conserv conservative interpretation, you would look at the maximum possible. And you can see in this case, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. I hope you found this video on conducting a man with the U test and the alternative tests in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.